Howdy my friends, today we're going to talk about the thermal coefficient of expansion. We're going to heat it up today. Okay, if I take any kind of material, right, aluminum, bronze, or stainless, this thing is built out of three different materials, and I start increasing the temperature, what happens to the little molecules inside there? They start getting excited, right? They start getting a little bit farther apart. The thing starts to grow, right? We know that. As you freeze something, it starts to get smaller, right? So the thermal coefficient of, uh, of expansion takes into account that material as it gets hotter is going to get bigger, right? It's going to grow. Okay, and what do we call that growth? Remember, we call it delta, just a change in length, right? If you remember from last, so this is a new equation, isn't it? By the time we get to the end of the book, we'll have 100 equations, y'all. So delta equals alpha delta T times L. So this is the equation for thermal expansion. So this is a look them up value. Every material has a known value. You can look that up in the table in the back of your book. Delta T is simply the change in the temperature. It goes from what to what. Um, if it gets hotter, this is going to be positive. If it gets colder, it's going to be negative because it's going to shrink, right? And then L is the length of the material that I'm interested in, okay? So this is a new equation. Look here, I've added it to our equation list. There he is. There's the one we talked about last time, PL over AE, the play equation. This is the same thing, change in length, change in length. This is due to force. That's due to temperature, right? So that's the only difference, okay? So for this problem, we have this bar here. It's got an aluminum component, a bronze component, and a stainless component. They have different diameters and different lengths, and it's in between two walls. So what does that mean? Remember last time we did this, we talked about the um, uh, extra equation that we need, our compatibility equation, so that when it grows between the walls, the walls push it back into shape. We're going to do that again too, okay? So find the normal stress in each piece of the bar. The thing starts out at 70 degrees, and it goes to a hundred degrees okay so here's what I think step one is and I think this would be good for y'all to do is you know look these things up in the back of your book let's do this let's let's find alpha for aluminum let's find alpha because this is a look em up value for bronze and we'll find alpha for stainless okay and those are all three in the back of your book and then we're also while we're back there because like we're thinking ahead, right? This thing is going to grow, and then we're going to use the wall to cram it back into place. And what equation are we going to use for that? That one, right? So we need E while we're back there for each of those materials. So let's find E, aluminum. We'll find E for bronze and E for stainless, okay? So let me get my book, okay? And again, if you flip to the very back of your book, you have those material tables back here. And we're going to use, because this is in U.S. customary units, we're going to use the U.S. customary table, okay? And we're going to look these values up, okay? So the first one is the coefficient of uh, thermal expansion. For 6061T6, it's 13.1 times 10 to the negative 6 per degrees F. That's a weird unit, isn't it? Per degrees F. But it's telling you how much it's going to grow for every degree of Fahrenheit that you have, okay? So then the bronze, what is it? 9.60 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree F. Stainless, stainless, where are you? It's the same thing, 9.60, 10 to the negative 6 per degree F. And then E for aluminum. Okay, now that's the much elasticity. And that is 10.0 times 10 to the 10 cubed um, KSI. Okay? We may put that in PSI. Otherwise, our thing will come out in kips, but that's probably okay. We can use kips. Um, let's see what else. Bronze. Bronze is 15.0 times 10 to the third KSI. All right, and then one more, and that's our stainless steel, and it's 28.0 times 10 to the third KSI. So there's our look em up values. It's kind of good to go ahead and get that all done at one time. I know we're going to have to use them, so there they are, okay? So let's talk compatibility for a second. I'm going to go way down here, right? And if I had wall 
and wall, right? You know what we're going to do? Remember what the steps from last time. We're going to take this thing and we're going to take away one of the walls, right? Take it away. Whoop. And we're going to let this thing expand due to temperature. Expand, expand, expand. And then we're going to put this wall back and the wall is going to push it, we'll call it FD, back into shape, right? And we'll find out how much force it's going to take to push it back so that the total deflection is zero, right? Because it's in between two walls, it can't really deform. So the way we work it, we're going to let it expand and then we're going to push it back to where it goes, okay? So here's the, whoa, that's a bad drawing, sorry. Okay, I'm just sketching this in real quick here. So if FD pushes that way, what has to push this way? FD, that's hard to write upside down. Okay, so what I'm looking for is this force right here because at the end of the problem, we're gonna need that force to find the normal stress. What's normal stress? You remember that? Normal stress is what? That's sigma normal, which is just the force over the area. Okay, so we'll get that in a second. Okay, let's let this thing expand and let's see what's going on, okay? Let's calculate some deltas. So delta equals alpha delta T times L. All right, let's do the aluminum first. The alpha is 13.1 times 10 to the negative 6 um, times the change in temperature, which is, oh, it's just 30 degrees, isn't it? 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And look what's going to happen, because this one's, this one's per degree Fahrenheit. So that and that are going to cancel out. And what's that going to leave me with? The last is L, and L for aluminum is 4 feet. Let's put it in inches. Let's call it 48. Because delta is going to be small, right? And if I put it in feet, it's going to be like 0. 0.0000 something, right? So it'll be better if we have it in inches, okay? So our delta is going to come out in inches, okay? So what is that? That's uh, on point zero zero one two. How many is that? Six is point one two three four five six. Okay, so there. Four zeros and a one three one. 131 times 30 equals times 48 equals, okay, so the delta for this guy is point zero one uh, eight eight. we'll call it 89, okay? So how much is that? 18 thousandths of an inch, 18.9 thousandths of an inch, so that's about three widths of a human hair, right? It's not very much, right? Okay, so let's, so that's uh, aluminum. Let's do delta for bronze. Now, could you do all this in one step? Yeah, but I don't think it makes as much sense as stepping through the problem, okay? So don't get on to me here. The next one is gonna be the, the bronze, which is point is one, two, three, four, five, nine, six, that's six decimal places, right? One, two, three, four, five, six per degrees F times, there's the 30 again. And this one is what, six feet, which is 72 inches. Okay, so its delta is point zero 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 nine six times 30 times 72 is equal to point oh two oh seven. Okay, so that's 20 thousandths of an inch. And then the last one is the delta for stainless, which is, same thing, 0. 0.00000096 times 30 times, how long is that one? 36. All right. So, 0. 0.00000096 times 30 times 36 equals, okay, point. 0.104. Okay. Now, so that's how much that the aluminum grows, the brass, and the stainless. So if I add those three together, I'll get the growth of the whole thing, right? So plus 0.0207 plus 0.0189 is equal to 0.049968. Let's call it 0 0.0500, okay? Okay, nose itching. 
So that's the total delta that the thing is going to stretch, right? And so now we need to conform it and push it back into shape. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to push it a total distance of right there that we have. So 0 0.0500 is equal to, now we're going to do the play equation, right? We're going to do this guy. So there's the delta that we got to push it back. There's the force that we're going to push it with. So what's the force on this piece? That. What's the force on that piece? That. What's the force on that piece? That. Right? Remember from statics, that, that, that force is the same throughout the whole thing. What's different? Well, the E is different, the area is different, the length, is, everything else is different, right? So here we go. So we have this. We have F. We'll call it FD, right? That, we're just finding that force there. Let's just call it F, okay? So force times length. And here we go. What are the first piece? The aluminum is, is uh, 48 inches. Okay. PL over AE. A is what? Well, it's going to be pi times 6 squared. Okay. And then we have what? E, which is uh, there, which is 10, 1, 2, 3, and that's KSI. This is inches squared, right? This is this is kips over inches squared. So the inches squared cancel out. And then what does that mean? I've got an inch over there and an inch over there. That's going to cancel out. It's going to leave me with kips for F, right? Okay, so there's one of them plus F times, what's the next one? Bronze. Okay, so PL, what's L? L is uh, 72 over A is 4 squared pi times 4 squared, and E is 15, 1, 2, 3, okay? Plus, one more, F times, what's that one, 36, divided by, the area is pi times 2 squared, and then E is here, 28, 1, 2, 3, okay? Oh, my. So now we just need to add that up and solve for F, right? So 48 divided by pi divided by 6 squared divided by 10,000 equals, ooh, that's little, 0.1234424F four, plus, next, 72 divided by pi divided by 16 divided by 15,000. Okay, this one's F times 0.1234 plus one more. 36 divided by pi divided by 4 divided by 28,000 equals point zero 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 one zero two three f Okay, so we need to, and now all that equals to point zero, let's just use our old number, 49968. We'll be precise. Okay, that's a 68. That is a very good 68, is it? Okay, here we go. I'm going to add all my S together. So I got that one plus 0.1234-9549 plus 0.1234-4294. Is that a 4294? I forgot when I didn't remember what that number is. 4244. Okay, that's a 4. Sorry, my writing wasn't very good, was it, y'all? Okay, so plus one, two, three, four, four, two, four, four equals, and then I'm going to divide that number into that over there. So point zero four nine nine six eight divided by the answer. Okay, so F equals F equals two hundred and seven point. 9886 newtons. You know what we could call that? We could call that 
208 newtons, couldn't we all? Okay, so that's the force that the wall is going to have to use to push the whole thing back into shape. Okay, man, a lot of work, isn't it? But we're not even to the answer yet. We got one more step to go. Okay, but it's an easy one. Okay, they asked us to find the normal stress, so we got to do this, right? So here we go. The normal stress in the aluminum is equal to the force in the aluminum, which is bam, 200. Did I put newtons over there? Sometimes I lose my mind. What is that, y'all? That's kips. Kips. What is wrong with you? Okay, so 200 and uh, now I can't remember. Eight kips divided by, and what are we going to have over here? We're going to have inches squared for area, right? And that's going to leave us with KSI. That's good stuff, right? So the area for this guy is, uh, I don't even know, pi times 6 squared, right? And that's going to give us KSI, okay? So that's kips over inches squared. I'm running out of room here, aren't I? Okay, so 208. 208 divided by pi equals divided by 6 squared equals 1.84 KSI. Sigma bronze equals... 208 divided by pi times 4 squared. Okay, so 208 divided by pi equals divided by 16 equals 4.14 KSI. And the last one, sigma stainless, is 208 divided by pi times 2 squared. Right? Pi r squared. So 208 divided by pi equals divided by 4 equals 16.55. Okay, so why is stainless the highest one? It seems like it's the hardest material. Remember, it's force divided by area. It's the one with the smallest cross-sectional area, so it has the highest stress in it, right? The big fat one down there has lots of area to distribute the load over. He's, he's kind of low stress, man. Okay, so that, my friends, is the final answer for that, and that is how you do that, okay? Thermal expansion, right? It seems easy, but you can incorporate it with all these other equations and turn this into a mess. All right, I hope that helps. See ya.